Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us again. Um, today, we are going to have a special virtual meeting for our 21st century scholarship students who are juniors. So this is your virtual junior meeting um, for our scholars. So to get started, um, again, my name is Rachel Meyer. I'm an outreach coordinator with the Indiana Commission for Higher Education or Learn More Indiana. Um, and again, I'm just gonna take you through your scholarship activities for junior year and make sure you understand how to get through that and get up to your senior year. So to kind of go back and see where you've come from, you enrolled in seventh or eighth grade, um, unless you were a foster care student in high school, and then um, our awesome friends at the Department of Child Services enrolled you, so congratulations. Um, so again, you enroll, and then we help you with all these activities. So what the scholarship pays for is 100% tuition and regularly assessed fees. Um, at our public two and four year colleges in Indiana. So that is places like Indiana University, Purdue, Ball State, Vincennes, um, all of those kinds of schools. If you wanna go to a private school, someplace like Notre Dame, Butler, University of Indianapolis, um, schools like that, we can only pay part of your tuition. So it's typically around like eight, to $8,500 per year. Um, if you wanna to go to a proprietary college, we would only be able to provide you with the money that you would receive if you went to Ivy Tech for the year. So usually around like $4,500 or so for the whole year. So keep that in mind. Um, again, we can only pay toward tuition, which is the cost of your classes, um, and then those mandatory fees that everyone is charged on campus. Um, so you will have to figure out additional scholarships and grants that will cover room and board, transportation, textbooks, supplies, all that kind of good stuff. So we give you four years of the scholarship um, and you have to access it within one year of graduating high school. So yes, you can take a gap year, but we really would prefer that you go straight into college after high school, if at all possible, even if it's just to take some online classes through the college. All right, hopefully this looks familiar to you. It is your 11th grade scholar guidebook. So we send these to the schools as well as offering them in like PDF form on our website. So we linked it there. That's the website you can go to find your scholar guidebook for your grade level. Um, it also goes through your pledge on the cover of it. Uh, essentially, we want you to do four things, right? So get a 2.5 GPA that's cumulative or above uh, for our purposes. Some of our partners at the colleges want your GPA a little higher for other scholarships and grants. Um, so just keep that in mind. But for us, it's 2.5 or above. Then we want you to be a good citizen. So you can't be getting in trouble for drugs, alcohol, all that kind of stuff in high school. Then we want you to get a core 40 high school diploma or one of the honors diplomas. Totally up to you which of those three you wanna get. Um, and then we also want you to complete your scholar track. Um, and we're gonna go through your activities here in a second. All right, so your, hopefully again, this looks familiar. This is your Scholar Track login homepage. Um, as juniors, hopefully most of you have already created or registered your student account. So for you who've already done that and you just need to log in, you'll enter your email address or Scholar ID in the top, and then you'll enter your password you created and just log in. If you forget your password, none of us here can see your password at all right? Um, so you'll have to click on that little thing that says forgot password. Um, and then our system will email you a link in the body of the email that you'll click on and it will let you reset your password. If you have not yet created your account or maybe you're one of those foster care students who was just enrolled, um, it's no big deal. We'll get you caught up really quickly. Um, but you'll need to create your account 
And so at the very bottom where it says register for an account, that's what you'll click on and then you'll go through the prompts. Ideally, if you have your social security number, that will get you full access right away. If not, either your school counselor or your outreach coordinator can get you your scholar ID number and then that's what you'll use to create a limited account. All right, your Scholar Success Program, your SSP on Scholar Track. Uh, these are the 12 activities that you need to complete in high school as a scholar. You can always go back. If you missed one, you can go ahead and log that later. Um, so don't feel bad if you have, you know, a freshman year one that you forgot to do or maybe a sophomore year one. Um, we can get you caught up as well. But basically, we're going to go through a little bit more in-depth your three junior year activities, which are visit a college campus, take an entrance exam for college, which is either ACT or SAT, and then searching for scholarships. So again, we cannot harp on this enough. Um, all of these activities have to actually be logged on your ScholarTrack account. Um, otherwise, you might do them, but we won't know unless you actually log them. All right, so the first one, visit a college campus. This can be done either in person or virtually. Uh, totally up to you and your family, whatever works best for you. We know transportation might be an issue uh, for some families, so there's great virtual tours you can take. Um, or during the time of COVID right now, um, you might be forced to do a virtual visit if they're not allowing guests on campus. So um, the best way to go about this is to actually contact the admissions office at the college or colleges that you're interested in um, and ask about do they do visit days or can you come visit and have a personalized visit um, where they would customize it and you could talk to a professor that's in your area of study you want to take, um, you know, maybe try the food, is the food edible, um, you know, check out the dorm rooms, all that kind of good stuff. So um, check into that in person if possible. Otherwise, there are fantastic virtual tours where you can get um, a little bit of an idea about how the campus looks, um, a little bit about you know what the inside of the residence hall rooms look like, um, and you can kind of see it in a 3D kind of form. Uh, but again, um, lots of virtual options, so don't be afraid to still complete this activity. All right, so your second one is take a college entrance exam. So for our purposes, that means either the SAT or the ACT exam. So what these exams are for is essentially for the colleges to assess where you are in your learning and then see how you might do in a college academic environment. So they're not meant to make you feel dumb or to be frustrated. Um, it's just to gauge where you're at um, in relation to other students across the country. So um, don't get too nervous about it. I know I'm an incredibly nervous test taker. I freak out hard, okay? Anxiety train right here. Uh, but it helps if you know it's not, you know, it's not the be all end all. So just take whichever one you feel like works best for you. If the colleges you're interested in no longer review these, we still have it mandated as a requirement for the scholarship. So that's best case scenario. You pick one, you get a fee waiver from your school counselor, so it's no cost to you, it's free. Um, and just do the best you can. Uh, if the schools that you're applying to or you want to apply to review these, then of course you wanna do the best you can. So take some practice tests, talk to your school counselor, your teachers, um, ask them for some advice and of course do the best you can um, and just don't stress too hard about it you can do it you can do it all right so the last activity for junior year is actually my personal favorite searching for scholarships so this is so important we cannot cover the entire cost of college uh, what we can cover is just a small amount it's not even half of what it really takes to go to a college 
especially if you want to live on campus. So definitely look into scholarships and grants. Those are free money instead of loans, which you have to pay back. Not all loans are bad, but you just want to take out as few loans as possible because you have to take pay back the loan plus interest on it. So places that are good to check for free money would be studentaid.ed.gov. That's where you can also get information on the FAFSA that you'll do next year. Uh, fastweb.com is a good search engine. Um, scholarships.com is very similar. Unigo and Capex um, also have scholarship listings from across the country that you can look into. Um, and then more importantly, check out, like ask your school counselor. Um, if you go to a church, definitely look into that. Um, community foundations for your county or your local area. Um, civic organizations, if you work, um, a lot of employment, you know, places of employment will have scholarships for the students that work there. Um, also, if your parents work, um, ask their employers if they have a program for children of their employees. So um, definitely doesn't hurt to ask around. Local businesses might have small scholarships you can apply for. Um, so check into that as well. All right, coming to the finish line, uh, shameless plug for our blog on our Learn More Indiana site. It is awesome. They post really good information about all kinds of things, both college and career. Um, so definitely check that out. We do have a few blog posts on there that direct you again to where you can find more scholarships and grants. So check into that. And then here is just a visual of what we can, like what everything normally costs. So out of 100% PI, um, you know, what percent is tuition and fees of the cost? So 38% of your overall cost to attend college is that tuition and fees, which is what this scholarship will help cover, again, at a public Indiana two- or four-year college. So we can only really help with 38%. So kind of review what these others are. Room and board is usually 41%. That's again, your food and where you stay. So where you sleep and you know, change your clothes and all that good stuff. Um, and then where you eat. And then books and supplies is 6%. And then transportation and other things like fees, um, you know, class supplies, shampoo, jeans, all that good stuff. That is kind of about 15%. So um, keep that in mind as you're looking for scholarships and grants. The College Scholar Success Program, this is your sneak peek. We do a more in-depth version of this for senior year, um, but we wanted to make sure you as juniors understand that not only will you have this high school program, you will also have to do this in college. And it's really crucial in college because you have to complete the activities or you lose the scholarship. So um, keep that in mind. You can't go back um, and get anything that you missed the year prior. So we really, really want you to understand it's really important in college to have your account. By your senior year, we'll ask you to upgrade your account to full access. If you've not already done that, that's adding your social security number on there for like a full dashboard. Um, and then we also want you to make sure that the email address you're using on ScholarTrack is not only yours, so make sure it's your email address, but it's also a Gmail or Yahoo, something that you'll keep forever, as opposed to using your school email. So it's fine to use your school email when we log you in and register you as a freshman and a sophomore, that's fine if you check it. Um, but starting junior and senior year, we want you to transition and kind of do a practice run for college. So if you need help changing your email address or upgrading your account, definitely ask your outreach coordinator. We will help you um, get that done. And then lastly, we are here for you. Reach out, please. Um, don't just wrestle with a question um, or be you know, concerned about something and, and then it's too late. 
reach out to us. No question is stupid. Um, we've heard a lot of questions um, and we never think it's an, you know, an insane question um, because you've never been to college, you've never done Scholar Track before. Um, so we wanna make sure you're comfortable with this, you get the practice in high school and that way when you're in college, you are com confident and comfortable um, so that you can achieve whatever you wanna achieve in college. So again, give us a follow on social, be our friend. We post really, really important stuff, like deadlines, new scholarships we find, um, but also we wanna interact with you. So if you have a question you want answered or if you have an idea for a video like this that would be super helpful, hey, reach out, okay? Um, comment on our posts, email us, call us, text us, whatever you wanna do. So we wanna hear from you because we're here to serve you, we're here to help you get from you know, junior high all the way through you know, your career. So um, on the right-hand side of the page is our list of all of our contacts. That's also in your scholar guidebooks. Um, so check that out as well. And then lastly, um, this is our outreach coordinator map. So if you're not sure who your outreach coordinator is, um, especially since a lot of us have not been able to get into the schools this year, uh, we might not be as familiar faces anymore. Check this out, um, find your color on there, and then um, you can reach out. All right, thank you so much for watching your junior year video. Uh, we hope it was helpful and at least a little bit entertaining. I know it's kind of boring, uh, but again, reach out if you have questions. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you.